Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're looking at alts against their Bitcoin value and the importance of this in a rising Bitcoin USD market. So if you enjoy the content, make sure you hit the like button down below, subscribe to the channel, then hit that bell notification icon so you can be updated with this time sensitive content and be first to the timeless content like today's video. Let's dive in. Over the past couple of weeks, I've been looking at altcoins on the channel. Now, this isn't something new. It's been out there for many cycles now. As Bitcoin increases in value, it's expected, it's seen that the altcoin BTC, so the altcoins pairing against BTC, begins to fall. So this is nothing new, but it seems like it's a new concept for a lot of people that are new to the space, which is fair enough. We're only used to comparing our investment against its USD, its fiat value. Now, in today's video, this is the second part. The first video, I'm looking at developing a winning investor attitude because I wanted to get in more detail around my mindset and how I have a, what my outlook is on the market. And I think that's really important to know when it comes to listening or you know learning from other people online. I, I do want to know what their view is and whether they're short term, long term, bullish, bearish, all that sort of stuff. So just a quick little recap. I'm bullish on BTC. I'm bearish on alt BTC. I'm bullish on alt USD and basically I've got to ask what do you value more BTC or USD and at the same time I need to reduce my risk. Now I'm not going to get into that in more detail that's from the previous video which I'll leave a link to at the end of this video so make sure you check that out. If you're unfamiliar with the cycle this is from Twitter it's a very well known post as well give it a like if you go over there flow of the crowd during the four year crypto cycle in the midst of the bear market no one wants Bitcoin. So we're accumulating Bitcoin. Two, when Bitcoin makes a parabolic move, the crowd floods into BTC. Altcoins go down significantly in Satoshi value. Accumulate altcoins with that BTC that was bought for cheap. It's essentially what I'm doing now. I just feel like we're in this stage one. If you think we're in different stages, then this is not going to be part of your mindset or part of your plan. After this happens, number three, after Bitcoin stops going up and consolidates, the crowd moves into altcoins. So you're already into the altcoins after the, the crowd starts to move into them. So then you start to sell your altcoins for BTC during the alt season. So we can loop back here while Bitcoin makes another leg up and have multiple alt seasons. So it looks like we've done a few of those recently in this 2021 bull market. 3B, on the final alt season, we don't loop back. Many of your no coiner friends are asking about Bitcoin. The entire herd is here. That seems like what we saw in April and May. A lot of people who knew nothing about cryptocurrency or never wanted to get involved with it, they were the ones that were asking about Bitcoin now. That was at the absolute end of everything. And the top of the market came in on the Coinbase listing. Go and check those dates. Coinbase listed on the NASDAQ top of the market. Next top was around Elon Musk going on Saturday Night Live. Those are very important points to note as the market begins to crash because that's when everyone else knows about it. But we're here to learn about altcoins against Bitcoin value and why one's more important than another at different stages. And I think this, this uh, infographic sums it up really, really well. The rate of new participants to the market has slow, slowed down significantly. That's what we're seeing right now in June. Bitcoin has a blow off top and the bear market is starting. Now, I haven't seen a blow off top in Bitcoin. Doesn't mean we have to get a blow off top every time. Sell Bitcoin to dollars, but hold some BTC forever. And that's what I generally do. And I'm adding ETH to that position now as well. I'm holding ETH forever as well. Now, the next slide I'm looking at is dumb money. Dumb money trades on emotion. Today, alts are up. You were wrong. This is the common comment on a lot of those videos. They're just looking at it in terms of hours or days. I'm looking at it in a, in a much longer time frame. And a lot of the other comments are, this didn't age well. That's one of my favorites. And they just look at it in terms of a day to maybe a few days. Uh, and then in other cases, when I'm talking about the video, I'm just looking at a short-term outlook and it's months later, then they say, well, this didn't age well. And they're not really putting anything into context, not understanding what the video is about. So hopefully you, you do. And if you don't, let me know in the comments down below so that I can expand on it in future videos. So this is the infographic for dumb money. Dumb money trades on emotions. I feel, and from what I see as well, so the science and the art, in the charts that we're either in this stage here, potentially back here, but I think it's more like this stage here. And I'm seeing a lot of dumb money. This is just the terms for it. Dumb money versus smart money comparison is that they're buying in this stage. Now, I could be wrong and I have my ways of 
figuring that out and then getting into the market so that I'm not just sitting on the sidelines. And so I'm looking at this here, dumb money buying a lot of alts and then they're bleeding against their Bitcoin value. So I'm interested in Bitcoin because I want to have more Bitcoin because when Bitcoin goes up from here, it will start to bleed the alts. The alts will bleed in their Bitcoin value. Their dollar value might stay okay and you just will be sitting on the side saying, what's going on here? You're talking nonsense because my alts are fine. Their, big, their, their dollar value is fine. But that just increases your risk. So what the, the dumb money then does is sell the alts as they bleed out. As Bitcoin rises, alts will bleed. Then they start to sell the alts because they get scared and they panic. What the smart money does, smart money is buying at these lows. So you can either be selling here or just not buying at all if you're already in your position. Then you start buying the lows, buying the lows, and you have patience because there's a lot of time where the market will just be down. So that's the difference between the two and where I'm looking at alts BTC against alts USD. I think alts BTC are in this sort of section here because we haven't seen Bitcoin go up yet. So that's my theory on why I'm buying Bitcoin at the lows and I'm not worrying about altcoins. I just keep it very, very simple at this point. It's not rocket science. I'm just buying Bitcoin because I think Bitcoin is going to go up and then bleed out the alts against their Bitcoin value should we see another rise in Bitcoin. So some important points to note, which we won't go into detail as it's beyond the scope of today's video. We've got 50% resistance levels. We have volume profiles, our Wyckoff method. We have weekly view. It's key for long-term moves, not just the daily stuff. But in today's video, I'm only looking at daily moves just to show that as Bitcoin goes up, the BTC value generally, not all, but generally will go down on the alts. Uh, rallies are almost guaranteed. I will definitely note that we will get some rallies up and then they'll start to bleed again, as we can see already with an example of Polkadot today. All right, so if they go up, I'm looking for a 50% reaction. So as they move to our GAN 50% levels, I want to see a reaction there. It'll get pushed back or it breaks through on strong volume. Some alts will fall further, some will base out for a rally, and some will be going up. Just use your analysis for each on your alts individually. Of course, how's that going to help? They're going to go down, up or sideways, but they're all different and I just see them in different points. But generally speaking, if Bitcoin goes up, the rest of them will fall. So how do we know when? I just say at this point, we have a mid-May low and we want that to hold. The mid-May low is the, the change, it's not necessarily the change of behavior, but it's a very important point to note on the chart because that's when we had the most fear and the most panic in the market. And that was around the 19th of May for many charts. It doesn't have to be all of them, but around the 19th of May. Looking at this tweet, I just posted this morning and just to talk about the old coins bleeding, just to make sure people are wanting to hear it. And yes, it's a little hard to understand the whole alt versus BTC for new people. So thank you for being honest. Here is that video. Now we'll get into the alts, but just as a comparison, this is the time that I was very, very bullish on Bitcoin. Here is one of the videos, June, stocks versus crypto. I'm loving the alpha on crypto against the uh, stocks at that time. And there's other videos on the channel, but we don't need to go into that. All the receipts are there if you need them. Uh, so this is the time that I really am very, very bullish through these areas. I see breakouts, I see breaks of triple tops, which is a very, very strong bearish signal. I see breakouts of highs. That's just like, go, get as much money as I can into the market at these levels. Now, these levels, this is a scary time for me. When I see bursts up and everyone getting excited and other channels really going on about how bullish they are on cryptocurrency at these highs and everyone should be buying, that scares me. That's the fear in me saying, not time. Now we've got this really, really strong uh, correction and this is a time where I'm contemplating are we bullish yet? Are we not? Because like back here, we just don't know on that low of, of March of the COVID crash, whether that's the time. And this period is where I'm thinking, all right, we've had the breakouts. We've had a lot of consolidation. We've got a lot of volume. All the signals are there and I'm happier to buy that. I'm a bit more conservative in that regard. I'm not trying to buy every crash. So what I see now is a big crash and we're starting to build at this point. We're starting to get some more volume back. A lot of the signals are coming back. And so if Bitcoin takes off, then I expect alts to bleed, which has happened time and time and time again in the market. Now, I'm still bullish on alts and BTC long term. I think I have a little bit of an idea that ETH and alts may be at something like this point they were in 2017, where ETH had this massive, this is a 70% correction, it doesn't look like anything on the chart, but it's very, very big correction. And then it went sideways for about six months as it consolidated and gained some traction, gained some volume into the market. And then it took off again. But this last movement was nowhere near as much 
as the first gains. And so I'm not going to be holding out for massive gains on the next leg up, but I definitely think there'll be another leg up. Could take six months, could take longer. Put, put that in previous videos, so make sure you go back and watch those. Links will be at the end of this video as well. But I've, I've got to have a bit of a plan and I have to be able to change that plan. Right now, I think it might be something like this. Solid increase, very, very solid correction for a continued bull market as well. So we're going to go through these charts and just have a look in detail. We'll start at the bottom from the Zs or the Zs all the way up through to the A's. And I'm just going to have a quick look at these. So yesterday, the 14th of June, this is timeless. You can go back and check these on many other different charts. Uh, so whether you're watching it now or in six months time, it's still the same premise. If you are following one of these sorts of uh, plans here, flow of the crowd during the four year crypto cycle. Now, I don't even think there's a four year crypto cycle. I just think there's a cycle of how money flows in these markets. As a recap for the 14th of June, for example, I posted this on Twitter yesterday just to explain the difference here. So if you want to have it in a written form, go and check this tweet out. Links are in the description down below for the Twitter account. My Twitter account, BTC. You can see all of these cryptos that here are up the top here are down against their BTC value and USD values, they're up. So if Bitcoin's up 10%, the cryptocurrency needs to be up 11% for it to have an increase in its USD price and its Bitcoin price. So that's the way I look at these markets. If they can do that day on day on day, then that is a crypto you want to be in because it's outpacing Bitcoin and USD. But generally speaking, they tend to bleed against Bitcoin. That's not all of them, but just generally speaking. And that's how I check them here. So I have a quick look, say at uh, Zill. Yesterday, Zill was break even. Not really much happened there. USD on the 14th, it went up a little because Bitcoin was going up. So Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin's increase yesterday was about 3.8%. Now let's skip through a few of these others. We got Zen. Zen was down on the 14th and I suspect it'll continue to fall because I don't see any support levels coming in just yet. And if it does have reactions, just like with many of these markets, if, it, if they do happen to rally, I want to be looking at their 50% levels. So I'm not going to go into detail on all of the charts, but essentially you want a significant high, significant low, 50% point, see if it rallies wherever it lands, pull this bar down to wherever it lands, and then you just rally up, see where it hits 50%. If it reacts from that, then we start to form another base or we fall further. That's basically what I'm looking for on each of these to determine whether it's time to be getting in or giving it more time to bleed out. Now, we have gone on a very long bull market on the cryptocurrencies against their BTC value. They've been up for quite some time, making very, very good gains. And I've also posted this on Twitter that I don't expect any markets that I invest in to go up thousands of a percent or hundreds of a percent against their Bitcoin value. And then all of a sudden, turn around and break to new all-time highs again. I could be wrong, but in the past, I have not seen that happen. And so I'm just going with history. I'm going with the data. I'm not trying to take random ideas and put them together. I'm just going with what I've seen in the past and put it into my plan. So I'm not at the moment buying into these alts. But like I said, they could definitely go up and have a rally, come back down, maybe do another rally, and that would be stronger again. However, if it got to this point and started to break down again, of course, I don't want to be in that market and I suspect it may get to here in time, but I'm looking at this in a midterm, probably still several more weeks to months in this case. I can definitely continue to update that as well, which I will most certainly do because I want to be gaining more Bitcoin in the long run and that's what I do with the altcoins. So XRP still looks like a downtrend to me. It's broken past its 19th, 23rd is still down here as well. Next chart is Stellar. Still looks like it's heading down. Again, these could rally. These could rally a little bit into these levels, but I'm not looking for a little bit. I'm looking for hundreds of, hundreds of a percent return on the Bitcoin value, not just from here to maybe these resistance levels, which is about 20% or so, maybe a little higher, 30%. That's not what I'm in the game for. That's why it's important to have your own plan with what you're looking for. I'm not looking for 20% returns. Uni, maybe it has a solid rally here into the 60,000s. You know, we're getting a little bit of a basing out here, a little bit of an increasing volume. That's what I'm looking for. But overall, I think it may still have a little more time. But uh, Uni has definitely gone on that big run, big run. So we're going to keep tracking this just to see whether it bases out and holds its level at these, in these levels here, around that 50,000 through to 80,000 level. TVK, still down. 
still down. Theta, that looks like a very weak rally. Serum, might have a rally as well, but the volume is just bleeding out. Doesn't look overly convincing to me. And we may even take out those May lows, which is even weaker. Solana, having a little bit of a rally here. From the 14th, it went down a little. Bitcoin was up a little. Matic, Matic also has been bleeding out for a lot longer than others, but it did have a massive bounce. Now it's starting to rally again, but the volume is just starting to die out. I suspect it'll probably come back and retest these levels that you can see have had a price cluster and then begin to bleed out again because Matic has gone on a absolutely phenomenal run. And I don't expect that to repeat anytime soon without some proper consolidation. Litecoin down. Yesterday, 14th, it was up a little against its Bitcoin value. So it would have shown a little more strength in its USD value because Bitcoin was also up that day. So the 14th, you can see it was up a little more. But remember, Litecoin has fallen a long way. So you have to compare these to where it's come from. It's one of the weaker cryptos, very much one of the weaker cryptos. Chainlink, in a different space altogether. This wasn't going to new all-time highs. It had its all-time highs last year. So that's why you have to compare cryptos uh, to where they're at in their own cycle. And so uh, Chainlink right now is looking like a potential bottom is forming. You've got some nice lows back here. And Chainlink might be one of the outliers which moves differently. But overall, you can see that you're getting the same sort of plan. Lower highs continue down. Then you get these big spikes. Filecoin had some news on these, these days here. And now it's just continued to fall and fall away. And should we get a breakdown of these levels, that's obviously not a good sign. And you can see it's just starting to base down and maybe we'll get another little rally before we base off again. But Filecoin as well has gone on massive run. ETH was down yesterday. Bitcoin was up just a little. Maybe it's basing out. Again, volume is a little low. Dot, one of the outliers. It spiked. But remember, Polkadot had news. So I think it, it spiked on the news. And I wouldn't be surprised if it started to fall a little way again, especially if the market is still bearish overall then the news isn't going to be as effective as if it was when it was in a bull market. And so we've hit our 50% zone. That's not a good sign, but we want to get above that. So the, the key here is when do we turn bullish? Let's consolidate above that 50% zone. That's when I get bullish. Our other 50% zone, which has been hit high to low, 50%, big breakdown from that point. So that's what I keep in mind as well, that it's still bearish on that side. It may have rallies and it may fall away as well. Dogecoin falling couldn't break those highs again, it's continued down. And I suspect if we continue to fall through these levels, even further down. Binance on the slide yesterday, down, Bitcoin was up. Aave, I feel this is slightly weaker here, but we may get a little rally as well. And again, all I'd be looking for is my 50% zone to let me know whether we are going into a bullish consolidation or this was just a sucker's rally. So let's get this drawing tool and we just move it up to the 50%. Maybe we get there. Hopefully, if we're going to the bullish stage, we get a bit higher, consolidate, and then get above these levels here. So that was the alert for Link that just went off. And it looks like Link is actually one of the outliers and moving up. So that's definitely a good sign for Link, especially because it doesn't trade the same as the other cryptos. You can see this was the tops for many other cryptos in May, but this was well and truly down and it actually was rejected pretty heavily at its 50% zone, which is a GAN theory, a GAN tool that we use solidly. Hit that 50% bang on. One inch also went up yesterday very strongly. So I wanted to present some of the outliers and basically what the overall trend of the market was, because this is just a day-to-day -day thing. Long-term, Bitcoin moves up. As we've looked at with these, these charts here, I suspect that's what will happen with alts. That's essentially what I'm looking at when it comes to alts against their USD value. I hope that helps you uh, understand the premise of that and what it is when it comes to our plans to, to be able to reduce the risk and increase our profits at the end of the day. So if you found some value from that, let me know in the comments down below. If we need a little more clarification, make sure you are following me on Twitter, ask your questions, and I will dive into those in more detail over on Twitter. Also, follow me on Instagram, daily Q and A's as well. So make sure you're checking out that and following the page. Now, if you found some value from this video, make sure you like it up down below, bell notification icon after you hit the subscribe button, join us for more content. And of course the investor accelerator, if you want to accelerate your investing knowledge, plus you can join us on the 
Plus we have a free email newsletter that goes out every two weeks. Link to that is down below. Just drop your email address and name. It's all yours in your inbox every two weeks. Make sure you stick around to the end of this video and check out the video that goes with this one, crushing the next stage of the Bitcoin bull market. Until then, have more fun to get more done.